what should you do in life when you want something really bad, but it's not coming to you? Maybe just surrender it. And if you're supposed to get it, it'll come to you. You know, sometimes we, you know, really want things, but yet, you know, they're not supposed to come to us. And yet we waste so much energy trying to get things that are impossible to get. I would say surrender it and see what's behind it. You know, there are many different choices and opportunities in life. And sometimes we put all our energy into one thing and it drains us of our life. I mean, people do that in relationships. They fall in love with somebody and the other person's not in love with them. And their whole life gets drained into an illusion instead of letting it go, making room for somebody to come who really loves you, really, you know, is there for you as a human being instead of trying to make somebody or something work that you're incapable of making to work. I would just surrender it. Let it go. See what's behind it. You know, you're putting a lot of energy into something that's not working. Just put the energy into yourself and build your inner life and attract what will work. Otherwise, you just drain yourself dry, a chasing illusion, you know? And I know that's not easy. Certainly in relationships, it's not easy. We fall in love with people <laughs> and they're not in love with us. And then we pour so much energy in trying to convince them to be in love with us. And, and it just falls apart anyway, usually. It's a much quicker path to finding happiness to surrender these things. Open, use that same energy to build your inner life, to get your heart open, your power inside yourself. And then you'll open and things will come. <coughs> People will come. Opportunities will come that you have the capacity to make work instead of chasing an illusion. Just clogs up the path to enlightenment anyway, pouring so much energy into things that don't work. I hope that's clear, you know, and it's, it's not easy. It's a lot of emotional congestion and a lot of mostly just chasing illusion and wasting a lot of energy doing it. People do that in professions, you know, chase the illusion for so much energy into what they think is going to come, not putting energy into themselves, building a system, and letting come what's supposed to come. I mean, when I was younger, I used to study acting in New York. For about two, three years, I did that. And I met a lot of actors, and they all had dreams about becoming big stars and this and that. And it was, it, it was kind of... You know, even before I met Rudy, I did this before I met Rudy. It was kind of always weird to me, people chasing the dream instead of building themselves. And then the dream comes to you. Whatever you're supposed to do in life, it comes. I mean, this work that I do today, I didn't chase it. It just came because I continued to build an inner life that was strong enough to be a servant to God. And it just comes. The books I've written, they just come. I had no plans on writing a book. And now I've got a book 
<laughs> I really, I mean, it's something, this thing. I mean, you know. The rest of it is a bunch of ego, you know, and it really gets you nowhere. It just throws your life away. Does anyone else have a question? I have a question, Stuart. Yes. Um, I'm fascinated with your Tantra posts and this last one with the amazing war scene. Um, I wanted to know why did you choose that and what the banner above says? You know, I'm not quite sure what the banner above, but I chose it because it's an amazing painting yeah. showing the whole world at war. Wow. And in the background is this extraordinary vision of God and nature and enlightenment that nobody sees. And they're all, you know, fighting with each other. Yeah. I mean, it's an extraordinary painting. A guy, Altdorf, who was a great painter. I mean, he was an extraordinary painting. Yes. That's why I chose it, because that's basically what the world is like. Everybody in it, in it. And yeah. nobody looks at the sky and sees <laughs> the, the glory of God manifesting around them. But they're all in there trying to beat each other up, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing painting. And uh, yeah. I chose it for that reason. It's a really powerful, it's really Tantra at work there. Because as soon as somebody gets a glimpse of that sky, they're not going to fight with anybody. <laughs> you know, it's all the radiance of God manifesting in the world, you know? It's amazing. It's a brilliant painting. It's just absolutely extraordinary. When I first saw that painting, I, it changed something in me. It was so powerful. Thank you. It's amazing. Was Albrecht Weltdorfer. You know, not too many people know that name, but he was a genius of Renaissance painting. You know? Landscape. I read somewhere he introduced the landscape into oh. art, this guy, you know? But he did something brilliant. I mean, it's such an extraordinary work of art. And so true to what life is all about. Everybody's blindly fighting with each other, trying to get the better of each other. You know, and there's the radiance of God all around them, and nobody sees it. Yeah. Thank you for those posts, too. Really, they're great. Yeah, that is that quote from Shakespeare about tomorrow and tomorrow. That, to me, is the greatest existentialist poem ever written. That thing from Macbeth. Yeah. Because it really is the truth of almost every human being. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this you know, tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Yes. You know? Extraordinary. You know, to use words to capture that it was an unbelievable, you know. Thank you. You know, I hope some publisher takes this book because I think if they distribute it right and they handle it right, it could really help a lot of people, this book that I've written. And it's written in, you know, a language that is clear to people. You know, it's not old, you know, uh, Sanskrit words and all this stuff that nobody understands, you know, the basic everyday language. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't, you know, I don't worry about it. Just stick it out there and see what it attracts. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask?
Okay, if there are no more questions, then thank you. God bless you all. Have a wonderful afternoon or evening. And there'll be a class on Tuesday, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>